I call this meeting of the Committee on Public Safety, Finance, and Policy to order. A quorum is present. Um, we do have four bills on the agenda today, but before we get to that, we need to move the minutes from January 31st, 2023. Do we have a motion to approve those minutes? So move, Madam Chair. Oh, you got it. I think I heard Representative Ingen first. So <coughs> Representative Hudson, you can move the next set of minutes for us. Ingen moves the minutes from January 31st, 2023. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion prevails and the minutes are approved. The first bill we have on the calendar for today is House File 30. It's Representative Richardson's bill. And um, welcome back to the committee, Representative Richardson. Since you're not a member of the committee, I will move that House File 30 be re-referred to the Committee on Ways and Means. Um, I do see, Representative Richardson, that you have an author's A2 amendment. I will move that amendment so that it's before um, the committee. Do you want to describe that amendment now? Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, the A2 uh, amendment would require a business buying or uh, selling scrap metal to have a valid registration with the Department of Public Safety. It would require the department to cancel or deny a registration if there is a conviction under the bill. And it also creates a waiting period of five years following a, conv a conviction cancellation or denial of re registration. And it aligns criminal penalties with what is currently in statute and also clarifies that the Department of Public Safety would have audit powers. All right, thank you, Representative Richardson. Any discussion to the A2 amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion prevails and the A2 amendment is adopted. Go ahead and explain your bill as amended, Representative Richardson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, House File 30 as amended is to address the skyrocketing catalytic converter theft uh, occurring across the state. There's been a surge in recent years and currently State Farm estimates that Minnesota ranks in the top five for converter theft insurance claims. According to the National Insurance Crime Bureau, converter thefts rose by over 325% from 2019 to 2020. And we know that behind these numbers that there are real people and families that have been impacted. Most of us know someone who has been impacted by catalytic converter theft, and some of us know multiple uh, people who have experienced multiple thefts. These thefts are hurting Minnesotans' pocketbooks as replacement costs can exceed $2,000 or result in a total loss of a vehicle. Uh, a recent case in Otter Tail County illustrates the importance of this bill, where a 34-year-old man was arrested in connection with the theft of more than 150 converters. Court documents say that the man would go to the same scrap dealer each week to sell two to three converters, and those court documents also said when confronted by law enforcement, he admitted to stealing more than 155 and was paid more than $40,000 for those stolen converters. Minnesota was also among nine states involved in a recent takedown of what the U.S. Department of Justice called a national catalytic converter theft ring. An estimated $38 million worth of stolen converters were shipped to a New Jersey shop, which extracted the precious metal powders from the equipment and sold it to a metal refinery for more than $545 million. The DOJ release notes it received assistance from the cities of St. Paul, Bloomington, Egan, Chaska, Roseville, and Plymouth Police Departments. It also received assistance from Anoka, Brown, Carver, and McLeod counties, showing the extensive reach of this crime ring. With criminal enterprises and conspiracies of this scale, it's no surprise that Minnesotans are calling for us to do more to prevent this theft. This bill would make it harder to be unjustly enriched by theft. It would allow only scrap metal dealers to purchase detached catalytic converters. It would amend the information that dealers must record to include an ID number to the vehicle from which it was removed in order to be able to identify uh, the, the vehicle. The dealer's employee must also uh, be recorded to ensure that we're tracking who is conducting the purchases. It includes document retention requirements for dealers and training for staff on requirements. And it also requires detached converters to be marked with either a VIN number or an alternative marking uh, program number. 
It allows uh, DPS, as I said earlier, to audit a dealer's records and prohibits removing the converter from the dealer's premises for seven days and payments are prohibited for five days. And it also establishes that a converter that is possessed in violation of state law is contraband and must be forfeited upon a conviction. With that, I will yield my time to the author testifier, Chief Sturgeon. Thank you, Chief Brian Sturgeon. If you wanna come down to the testifier table, welcome to our committee. Please introduce yourself and begin your testimony. Thank you, Madam Chair. My name is Brian Sturgeon. I'm Chief of Police for the City of West St. Paul. The City of West St. Paul is small. We are only five square miles with a population of about 21,000 residents. And we are not unlike any other city or community within the state of Minnesota so with the problems associated with Catholic converter thefts. <coughs> and we have seen this problem throughout not only our state but our nation. In West St. Paul, in 2017, we had 12 Cadillac converters stolen. 2018, we had four. 2019, we had zero. 2020, we had 45. 2021, we had 177. 2022, we had similar numbers to 2021. These thefts occur all over our town. On residential streets, driveways of homes, parking lots of schools, and our businesses. It dramatically affects our residents and visitors to the city. We have many residents that have been victimized more than once, sometimes two or three times. Just a couple weeks ago, for the third time, we had a resident who reported a Cali converter stolen off the same vehicle which was parked in front of his house on the street. There's a single working mother with two school-aged children that twice in one month had her Cali converter stolen from her vehicle while parked in the parking lot of her apartment building. We've had older residents who depend on their vehicle to get to doctor appointments but have to reschedule because their Cali converter has been stolen from their driveways. We have all heard stories of individuals in our communities that have been assaulted, even murdered, when encountering thieves stealing their Cadillac converter. We have a wide range of residents in our community of different socioeconomic classes that depend on their vehicle to get to work, transport their children to and from school and school activities, and to arrive and go to important appointments to address their health needs. If you remember in the early 2000s, everywhere in the state and nation, we saw a large problem with clandestine laboratories making uh, methamphetamine. Legislation was done through the regulation of precursors. Today, we very seldom see methamphetamine labs. The problem was significantly addressed legislatively. We need a similar approach to address Cali converter thefts. Regulations and restrictions on the sale and recycling of these converters in this proposed bill will do just that. Law enforcement, we cannot arrest our way out of this alone. We need additional support and action. We need legislative action. When this bill failed to move forward last year, the city of West St. Paul and many other communities throughout the state of Minnesota did their part in passing ordinances to address the issue. Now the state of Minnesota needs to take action. I am asking you to support this bill and ensure it gets passed to help us combat this problem that again, we cannot solely arrest our way out of. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. And I think a couple of people have signed up to testify as well. Chief uh, Jay Henthorn, welcome to our committee. If you can please introduce yourself and begin your testimony. Good morning. My name is uh, Chief Jay Henthorn from the Richfield Police Department. Um, I'm also the Director of Public Safety. I want to thank Representative Richardson uh, for bringing this important bill forward again. Uh, and I'm here today to testify in support of House File 30 on behalf of the Minnesota Chiefs of Police Association. The Minnesota Chiefs of Police Association represents over 300 Minnesota police chiefs across the state of Minnesota. As you are aware, the massive increase in catalytic converter theft has impacted citizens across the state, as Chief Sturgeon just testified to. This growing problem has been met with some modest measures in pilot programs, but House File 30 takes the appropriate next step to establish a criminal penalty for unauthorized possession or purchase of a catalytic converter. 
This bill will help our agencies hold those accountable involved in this criminal enterprise. Again, thank you members for supporting this bill and also Representative Richardson for bringing this bill forward again. Thank you for your time today. Thank you, Chief. And we also had Jeremy Estenson sign up. And while you're coming down to the testifier table, I just wanted to introduce that we have 11th and 12th grade students here from Groves Academy in St. Louis Park. So welcome to, to our committee. We're happy that you're here today. And maybe you've heard about catalytic converter thefts going on in Minnesota. <laughs> so this is something you're seeing, seeing us in action as we try to address this problem. Um, welcome to our committee. Please introduce yourself and begin your testimony. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, members. Uh, um, we, uh, I'm Jeremy Estenson, uh, work for Taft Advisors, represent the Institute of Scrap Recycling uh, Industries, otherwise known as ISRI. Uh, and we are not exactly new to this scenario. And by that, uh, if you go back about a decade, there was copper theft uh, in the wake of the housing crash. And uh, at that time, um, John Choi, uh, Ramsey County attorney, brought a group of stakeholders together and said, we need to fix this. We need to solve the problem. Um, it looked to, to industry as uh, having a unique set of expertise. Uh, we see people coming and going all the time. And he said, there seems to be some gaps in your uh, acquisition process. And, uh, you know, as industry, we disagreed a little bit. We said, we're not criminals. Uh, but we worked with the stakeholder groups, including law enforcement, prosecutors, uh, local units of government, and so forth. And we came up with some solutions. And so um, if, for instance, uh, Representative Engen was to walk into a scrapyard today to sell some old appliances, here's the things that would happen. He'd drive in, his license plate would be captured by a set of cameras. He, um, or I'm sorry, he would drive in. He would then walk into the store. His face would be captured by a set of cameras. He would then have his materials captured uh, electronically um, and uh, all saved. He would sign an affidavit that says, this is my stuff to sell. He would get paid in some sort of electronic or check form, uh, some trackable form, and a number of other things. All of that came from the stakeholder group that um, County Attorney Choi excuse me, County Attorney Choi pulled together. And we think we've got a sort of similar situation. Um, and I'd like to thank Representative Richardson for um, being thoughtful and taking some meetings and discussing these things with us. Um, as industry, we've made a commitment to her to come up with some things that she'd like to see in the bill related to uh, penalties uh, for bad actors in the scrap industry. And um, she mentioned this situation in Ottertail County. It's unfortunately true. Um, crime exists on both sides of the, of the uh, tran transactional equation. Um, but what, what we're hoping we can do is come up with something that doesn't cool or slow down recycling. These catalytic converters have little bits of different types of platinum in them, uh, palladium, rhodium, and so forth, uh, rare, rare minerals. And when you slow down recycling, uh, you mine more. Uh, right now, uh, between 25 and 30 percent of catalytic con new uh, catalytic converters are made with old catalytic converters. And we don't want to see that slow down. And, and to be perfectly honest, we don't want criminals. Um, usually in my testimony, I talk about a typical transaction, and I think we're running out of time, so I won't do that. But most of these stolen catalytic converters don't end up in Minnesota. They end up someplace else. Guess what? That's something one of our local legitimate businesses could recycle in the future um, in, a, in a, you know, meaningful, profitable, you know, beneficial way. So um, we look forward to continuing to, to work with Representative Richardson and stakeholders to come up with something that makes sense. Uh, and Madam Chair, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you for your testimony. I don't see that anybody else has signed up, but do we have any other members of the public who wish to testify? Any students? <laughs> I'm not trying to put you on the spot, sorry. <laughs> All right, I don't see any other members of the public uh, wanting to testify. Before we move to a discussion of the bill, we do have a couple of other amendments to discuss. First, we have the A1 amendment, which I believe Representative Mueller, you'll be offering that. Please describe your amendment for us. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And the A1 amendment is basically is requiring that the courts will have to order restitution to the victim for the cost of the replacement of the catalytic converter. And um, making sure that this is really important because the actual cost to replace a catalytic converter is a part of the value and also we have to, you know, it, consider the labor that it would do to, uh, that it would incur the cost that it would incur to replace it and put, install the new converter as we heard from several of the testifiers already victims of those who uh, 
of catalytic converter theft often are those who are of lower social economic stature because of the fact that they have to park their vehicles outside or there are there's things that are out of their control. This not only would honor these people by allowing them to receive restitution in this way, but it would also hold the criminals uh, accountable for this. So um, I would ask that you would support my amendment, please. Thank you, Representative Mueller. And I have the A3 amendment to your amendment. Um, and what we intend to do with the A3 amendment is, and we'll have the bill author speak to this as well, but um, we agree that the cost of the catalytic converter in and of itself may not be enough to make victims whole again. We do have a separate restitution statute, 611A, where courts, victims can request restitution and then it, um, it goes through the process for what courts consider when granting restitution. So we think this is a good idea. We just don't want to make it require, because not all victims may request restitution. Um, so hopefully you'll consider the A3 amendment to be a friendly amendment to your amendment. Representative um, Mueller, why don't you talk, and then we'll call on Representative Richardson. Thank you, Madam Chair. And we, as we were talking about this as a team, you know, we do consider it a, a, the amendment to the amendment a friendly amendment. We, it's, it's something where it's it's better than nothing. To be honest, we really want to make sure that people are going to um, receive that monetary restitution, and that our these victims of these crimes are going to be um, that are going to receive some sort of financial wholeness. And, and we we want to make sure that. While we also heard testimony from the from the uh, representative from the scrapyard, um, we want to go after the criminals, <laughs> and um, and so some t that's why we think this is important. We understand about the 611A statute and all those things, so we do find this a, a friendly amendment. Thank that's you, Representative friendly. Mueller. Um, Representative Richardson on the A3 amendment. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Representative Mueller, for bringing forward uh, the the amendment. Um, I, I think that it's uh, important that uh, to highlight that restitution is available and that um, a victim would be able to opt in uh, to restitution. And I think this also uh, ensures that we're taking into consideration if insurance is paying um, as well, because that would be part of sort of the um, the inquiry for the court as, as they're figuring out how to make someone whole. All right, thank you. Any further discussion on the A3 amendment to the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion prevails and the A3 amendment to the amendment is adopted. Now we'll go back to the underlying A1 amendment, A1 amendment as amended. I can never say that right, no matter how many times I practice. Um, any more discussion to the A1 amendment as amended? All right, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion prevails and the amendment, as amended, is adopted. All right, now Representative uh, Richardson will have a discussion to your bill as amended. Um, any member discussion? I'll just start too by saying um, this has been a big issue in my community as well. And I recently got notice from a retirement um, facility that they had, I believe, seven stolen within the course of two weeks. Um, I heard this on the campaign trail. I know neighbors who this has happened to. Um, so I know that this is happening throughout our state and I'm just really glad you've spent so much time and effort trying to tackle this problem and I'm thankful you brought this bill forward. Other member discussions, Representative Hollins. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I just wanna thank Representative Richardson for working on this bill. I know it's been a long time coming and you've been working on it for several years. Um, I also have had community members come to me with this issue, and in particular, it's been compounded because of our supply chain issues. So when somebody has their catalytic converter stolen, I had, um, I had a constituent who was not able to get another one for six months, and that meant she needed to rent a car for six months, which is bananas because honestly, I don't think most of us could afford to rent a car for six months, let alone people in my district, which is not particularly affluent. So I really appreciate this. I also appreciate the testimony regarding the recycling industry. Um, as, as some of you know, I do a lot of work in the recycling area, especially in precious metal recycling. And I do think that 
Um, this is something that we can overcome. Currently, there's only 23% of our recyclables are actually being recycled. So we have a long way to go. And I don't think that um, creating some, some tougher regulations around catalytic converters, an issue that is like impacting so many of our Minnesotan constituents, I don't think that that's gonna you know, really create this, this severe dip in recycling, um, electronics recycling or precious metal recycling that we think um, because there are so many opportunities to increase the amount of recycling that we do in the first place that we really can work on some of those policies to increase that before we start trying to worry about what's gonna happen with this. So I really appreciate you bringing this bill forward and, and thank you. Representative Whitty. Thank you, Chair Muller. Um, thank you, Representative Richardson, for bringing this bill forward and uh, being able to uh, have some type of action uh, when this theft happens. Uh, my comment is more of a public service announcement piece. A lot of police departments have kits that you can um, put over to catalytic converters that um, can um, make it very difficult for them to, the, the steal them, but also then to recycle them. So, but obviously I appreciate you bringing this bill forward because not everyone is aware of that or it happens, but um, it's more just a public service announcement. Further discussion? Sure. Oh, Representative Hudson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Representative Richardson, I, I just uh, appreciate the fact that you're presenting a bill that um, I, I presume we're all gonna be in agreement um, with, and this is a problem that's been ongoing as has been described, and, and it's a it's a pleasant experience to be able to address you. I think this might be the, the second or third time that um, I've sat in a committee room where you presented a bill and to be able to do so without picking it apart too aggressively, I appreciate that opportunity. Um, and, and just to reiterate the, the concerns that have been expressed, I, I think we're gonna support this. I don't wanna speak for everybody else. I'm gonna vote for it. Um, but the, the concerns that were expressed by Mr. Estenson regarding being a tad aggressive uh, against the scrap dealers um, as opposed to focusing on the criminals uh, that are engaged in what can progress into a violent crime as described by Chief Sturgeon, um, assaults and murders even which have occurred during the commission of this crime of stealing catalytic converters. Um, I would hope that at some point in the future we could circle back and focus on um, making sure that we're getting the folks who are actually engaged in that crime off the streets, but I appreciate your bill. Thank you. Representative Nabani. Chair Moeller, thank you. And uh, Representative Richardson, uh, as, as to tag on to what Representative Hudson said, great bill long overdue, a lot more balanced in the approach and how we're dealing with the situation and holding the perpetrators um, responsible for this too. Um, line five, or page five, one, 115 to 117, you've got the discussion about the keeping of the records. And one of the things that I was wondering if this bill moves forward before it hits the floor, would you be interested in, in discussing some of the reporting? As I've talked about in the past when we've had discussions on the converter bills, um, part of the frustration it, when you're investigating these uh, is that there's no online reporting. Currently, the the reporting is held at those dealerships. So tying into the conversation you had about the person from, was it Ottertail County? Um, you know, that person could have been stealing those catalytic converters down here in the cities and going back up to Ottertail County. The uh, financial uh, incentive is obviously there that would make it worth their while to put the miles on and get that separation. So, um, and, and I don't know if one of the chiefs or one of the law enforcement agencies here want to weigh in on it, but having a system like the automated pond system or leads online that they use for pond transactions and make it much easier to locate who is doing these thefts, um, I, I think that would be the final bow that would make this much easier to track who is being responsible. Would you be interested in having that discussion <laughs> offline? Representative Richardson. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And yes, always uh, happy to continue uh, conversations. And I would just note that, um, you know, within the Ottertail County case and what we know from court records, a lot of those were stolen within Ottertail County. And so um, also just um, 
understanding sort of the impact here when we're talking about holding uh, people who are committing crimes accountable. We're also talking about the dealers who are in fact ex accepting these things and with this uh, most recent uh, crime ring as well to translate $38 million of stolen catalytic converters into $545 million of unjust enrichment is something in my mind that we need to ensure that we're balancing uh, to ensure that we're holding that accountable um, as well. Representative Botney. And, and I understand. Um, I'm just saying that until you've had um, contact with someone who's got a trailer full of catalytic converters that you can't prove or stolen because you don't know where he's doing his doing his uh, trading them into the scrap dealers and connecting the dots, knowing that these guys put on a lot of miles. It's, uh, you know, we can put out crime alerts saying, this person has a bunch of catalytic converters, please be on the lookout. Um, you know, if you have that pawn-like system, you can start looking at contacts, tying all the information together, traffic stops, where's he been? Um, it, it's a lot easier to track down who is responsible for these if we have some way to online search as opposed to just going a couple counties over and you don't know where they're at or what they're doing. So, thank you, Chair. Uh, Representative Richardson. And, and, and Madam Chair, I know that the department is working towards um, creating uh, an online tracking system, so happy to, to talk more about that as well. Thank you. Any further member discussion? All right. Closing comments, Representative Richardson. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, it's taken a number of years <laughs> uh, to get to this point uh, to have uh, um, bipartisan support of this bill. So I appreciate those who are voting in, in support of the bill. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Richardson. I'll renew my motion that House File 30, as amended, be re-referred to the Committee on Ways and Means. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion prevails. Thanks again, Representative. All right, I'm gonna switch over to the testifier table. So give us just a minute, please. <laughs> you want me to? So um, the next bill on the agenda is House File 686. Uh, this is Chair Moeller's bill. Would you like to move your bill? Yes, so moved, Madam Chair. Great. Uh, Representative or Chair Moeller moves that House File 686 be referred. Oh, um, would you like to specifically refer it to the Judiciary, Finance, and Civil Law Committee? Yes, thank you, Chair. That is my motion. Great. Uh, we have the bill before us. Uh, there are no amendments filed on your bill, so please tell us about your bill. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. So House File 686, some of you who were here last year will remember this bill. Um, this is a bill that deals with carjackings. Um, and I know a lot of you are aware of the increase in carjackings and not only Minnesota, but nationwide. Um, and when I talked to my sheriff about this back before last year's session, they um, were talking to me about some technology that they can help use to be able to um, stop a person who has stolen a car from fleeing in really dangerous situations. So there have been a number of situations in um, Minnesota where somebody has stolen a car and then they flee from police and it puts the people on the road at danger. It endangers um, law enforcement and it endangers those who have stolen the car often are juveniles and there have been deaths as a result of that happening. And so this technology is through the use of GPS trackers where they can attach these trackers to a car that has been stolen and then be able to follow this car via the tracking system 
and effectuate a stop when it's safe to do so, rather than trying to do the high-speed chase, or if they're calling off these high-speed chases, then of course the person gets away and you may not ever apprehend the suspect or have the evidence you need um, to prosecute that person later. And so this technology is, uh, will be very useful in this situation. One of the problems that we have with our current statute system is that it makes this technology a crime to use this, these tracking systems. And I never looked into the history of this statute, but I assume it probably has to do with the fact when, when these tracking devices came out, we didn't want people just randomly placing them on other people's cars, stalkers, domestic abusers, that sort of thing. Um, but there wasn't a carve out for law enforcement. Nobody probably could foresee um, this being used for this purpose at the time. And so what our bill is really trying to do is allow law enforcement to use these tools when a car has been reported as stolen. Um, we really worked hard on the language last year with, uh, we got some input from the ACLU because we didn't want to have this to be sort of an indefinite use of these devices. The idea isn't that you're going to track this person to see who they're talking to, where they're going next. Really, we want law enforcement to be able to use these devices solely to be able to stop this car when it is safe to do so. Um, and so that some of the language about how long the, they can use these tracking devices, that is in the bill now. Um, we also got some feedback from Mr. Neumeister. I know he's going to be testifying today, too, that we incorporated. And then this bill was actually agreed upon. We voted on it in conference committee. Um, it was actually agreed upon. So if we would have had an omnibus bill last year, um, this would have been in it. So I am just bringing it again and hope to have your support. And I do have a testifier. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, would your testifier like to step up? Thanks, and as a reminder, um, please state your name and your title for the record as you get started. I'm Mike Martin. I'm an undersheriff with the Ramsey County Sheriff's Office. And uh, I really appreciate your taking the time to um, hear this bill. Uh, this is really important to us. Um, in early 2021, uh, we saw a dramatic increase in the number of carjackings and auto thefts um, throughout the state, but uh, in the Twin Cities area, it was even more pronounced. Um, as a result, um, we created a carjacking and auto theft team and sought a grant which we were able to uh, received from the Department of Commerce that helps us fund uh, dedicated investigators who work these cases in Ramsey County and also uh, the county attorney's office in Ramsey County, uh, County Attorney John Choi also received part of this grant that helps us do some intervention and prevention work with youth uh, who are involved in carjacking and auto theft. Uh, whether they're repeat um, auto thieves or whether they're uh, peripheral and first time in a car, it allows us um, the opportunity to meet with families and work with them to try to reduce uh, this crime and get uh, the kids the, the help they need. Um, the, uh, over the last probably five to 10 years, we've seen a um, real development in the ability to track vehicles. Uh, new technologies uh, allow us to do things uh, like we have a star chase technology which we can put in our squads. It actually will shoot a, what's I, I can only describe as a Nerf, a big Nerf <laughs> um, gun, uh, it shoots at the car, there's a um, adhesive on that that sticks to the car, and then it allows us to not have to chase that car. It's a, it has a GPS device in it. We can back off, we can all monitor on our phones where that car is, and then we're not involved in a reckless uh, chase or a chase that endangers the public. Um, so it allows us to kind of head to the area where the car is going, but not have to drive at excessive speeds. Um, and we can relay that information forward to other agencies and then hopefully wait till that car is stopped 
and then go in and, and arrest the offender or wait for them to get out of the car and then arrest the offender. Um, so we have that technology. We have pucks now that we that are look like a little hockey puck that we can actually uh, stick on a stolen car if we can get close enough, throw it into the bed of a stolen pickup truck um, and do the same thing. Um, we also have uh, manufacturers who embed GPS technology into their vehicles. Uh, it used to be just high-end vehicles, but now most manufacturers have some type of a GPS system where they can track that vehicle. We can contact the manufacturer and ask them to turn that on and let us know where that is. Um, and then there are other apps. I, for lack of a better term, I'll call them apps like OnStar and, and other applications that are aftermarket that might be um, on a car that allow us to track that vehicle. Um, right now, the current statute as it sits doesn't allow us to do that unless we make contact with the owner and get consent from that owner to track that vehicle. Um, that's a lot of times that's just uh, we can't do it. We can't get a hold of the person fast enough or we can't get a hold of them because they're out of the country or they're, you know, unavailable, have their phone off. So we really um, struggle sometimes to get a hold of those owners. So we can't use these devices. Um, this bill, uh, Representative Moeller's bill, would allow us to track that vehicle if it has been reported stolen. So if you report that your car is stolen, we will get a hit in our system when we run the license plate. So we'll know that it's an actually uh, reported stolen, that there's a report that backs it up, and it would allow us to track that vehicle and hopefully have fewer pursuits, less damage to vehicles, um, it would be a disincentive to the auto thieves if they know that we uh, can do this. And, um, and the, one of the other issues is we have certain types of vehicles that are very commonly stolen because they have flaws in how they're manufactured. Kias and Hyundais. Um, and we have insurance companies now that are saying they won't insure these vehicles. Um, and we have people that have had their car stolen a couple times. And, uh, and unfortunately, it has a disparate impact on the people who can least afford it um, because a lot of these auto thefts are occurring in areas where people, because the cars are parked outside apartment buildings on the street, it's people who don't have garages. So um, I appreciate um, your support of this bill and would answer any questions you might have. Thank you, um, and and I understand that we have another testifier from the public, Mr. Neumeister, who would like to share some thoughts. And Mr. Neumeister, please state your name and title for the record. Madam Chair, members of the committee, Representative Muller, my name is Rich Neumeister. Three short points, which I sh also shared with the chief author of the bill before I did this. The bill is a work product of many voices that balances the rights, liberties, and privacy with the needs of law enforcement with the new technology. Don't kid yourself. New technology being used by law enforcement and as I have done through data requests like with the Stingray several years ago, Tony Webster with geofencing, these are battling against our privacies and liberties with what the law enforcement wants. And this was one of those as, as an example. And so through that work, we have come out with this bill. I bird dogged it through the other body. I spoke with Mark Johnson today, earlier about saying about this. So I wanna say thank you, Representative Muller and Senator Mark Johnson for working out this language. My second point, if you review the bill, you will see, I don't have it in front of me right offhand, you will see that after 24 hours, if you're still following, there has to be done a search warrant. And I have a concern about this. It's a, it's a point, and you, may, you might want to consider as the bill goes forward. 
It would be interesting to know what's the priority. As you know, a stolen car, as Deputy Sheriff Martin said, people need that car back to do the things that they need to do. But if it's going to go past more than 24 hours, I think as policymakers and the public with the interconnection of technology, how long are they keeping following? You know, and I, I think that's a legit question. So somehow, some way, there can be some type of mechanism like there has been with body cameras and license plate readers. It's noted in the police report. So people like me or others who have an interest then can do some follow through. The third point, Representative Mueller raised this. Again, to tell you how long I've been here, I've been here for over four decades and a half, 46 to be exact, for sessions. 35 years ago, the statute that's being amended, I worked on with your predecessors, Representative Pugh, who became a judge in Dakota County, and Senator Randy Peterson, who was a, became an appeals court judge. This law has not been revisited in 35 years. And with technology, case law, and all those kinds of things, policymakers, judges, police, county attorneys, don't know really what our, all our rights are. And as Representative Mueller, Madam Chair, and I and others who went through this process have realized there needs to be some update so we can protect what is the new technology so our, our rights can be preserved. So if there's any of you who are interested to do that, because it takes some work, I would encourage you, talk to Representative Mueller, who can probably share with you who some people might be. And I also am more than willing. Again, I only got a handful of years left on, on the life. And one of those people who have done many things over the years, this is one of those, uh, what do they call it? You, you know, buckets that I would like to do is try to update this law for everybody's rights and liberties and to know really what they all are. Madam Chair, members of the committees, those are my points. And with the technology, you heard it, 35 years ago there was no such thing as a dart gun. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Newmeister, and I, we hope that you have more than just a handful of years left. <laughs> um, we appreciate your expertise around privacy issues. Um, are there any other members of the public who would like to testify on this bill? Um, seeing none, we'll move to member discussion. Oh, um, oh, great. Um, and I'll just start with a comment of my own um, that I do think that it is incredibly important as technology is advancing that we keep privacy top of mind. Um, and I'm glad that, um, that uh, Chair Moeller had the opportunity to work with ACLU and Mr. Neumeister to make sure that this is truly narrowly tailored in a way that will achieve its goals without having unintended consequences around surveillance of a lot of other people besides the person who might have stolen this vehicle. Um, so, so I just wanted to uh, raise that. Um, and it looks like a Representative Kieran has uh, something to say. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair, um, and thank you, Chair Moeller, for this bill. Um, I just wanted to to share a, a couple of a couple of things about um, this kind of real world application. And it was only a, roughly ten years ago that I was a student in law enforcement, and uh, with my classmates, we were talking about all of the potential things in the future. You know, um, Batman-like, if you will, um, type technology where it would really make uh, the public safer, safe, safer. Um, and the job of the officer safer. Um, because um, part of what uh, can happen in a pursuit of a vehicle um, is that officers try to get ahead of the chase um, and throw out stop sticks on a freeway. And that, as we know, and it has happened, um, can be disastrous. It's, it, it's fatal, and it has been fatal. So um, I just wanted to point out that Absolutely, this protects our communities and the public, um, but I think this is a great step in uh, protecting officers as well. So thank you. Thank you. Um, and Representative Becker-Finn. Uh, thanks, Chair Feist. Uh, also, just wanted to throw out, too, you know, if you're breaking the law, you lose some of your privacy rights. And I think this is a great example of 
um, it's narrowly tailored and I really hope that we can move this quickly and get this through to, to what Representative Curran said. Um, you know, where it gives us a tool, it gives law enforcement a tool so they don't have to do the more use the more dangerous tools to still track these vehicles down. And I also wanted to point out, you know, one of the exceptions is consent of the owner of the vehicle. And if you have consent from the owner, there really shouldn't be, there's there's really no privacy concerns because the, the, <laughs> the other person driving the vehicle doesn't have a right to be driving the vehicle anyway. So um, I think this is really a, a great bill and I'm hopeful we can get it to the governor's desk sooner than later. Thank you. Thank you, and Representative Pinto. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I just kind of want to take this opportunity to, to, to note that this um, makes me think about innovation and reform in policing in general. So in uh, some of the law enforcement jurisdictions in the community where I'm a prosecutor um, have um, really tightened their rules on chases um, and have said, you know, uh, that, that gets to be very, very dangerous when you have a high-speed chase. We know a lot of people lost their lives in doing that. And I think there was some criticism or some thought like, oh, not, you know, being soft on crime by doing that. Um, I have charged so many cases where the police, high-speed chase starts, starting to get dangerous, they peel off, they don't pursue. Um, and you know what? Very often, we can figure out who is driving that car in various ways. I mean, for one thing, often have a traffic stop, they show the driver's license and then the person drives away and they don't have to chase them because now they saw the driver's license in the face. Um, but so, so often, and so this to my mind is another example of innovation in that, right? Being able to not have a high speed chase situation, be able to retrieve somebody's vehicle. And I think often when we think about reforms and we sort of have a knee jerk, knee -jerk reaction, oh my goodness, uh, you know, uh, whether there's a, a non-public safety traffic stop or whatever it is, um, these things, we can think them through and communities can be kept safe um, in all the different ways that, that means, including to not have a high-speed chase going through their, uh, through a neighborhood. Um, so thanks, Representative Moeller, and thanks, Madam Chair, for the chance to, to make that broader comment that this bill gave me the chance to do that. Thanks. Thank you, Representative Pinto. Uh, Representative Novotny. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, to, as, uh, as you might know, I'm the co-author uh, co on the bill. I think a lot of great work has been done to clean things up. I think the 24-hour window that uh, Mr. Neumeister brought up, um, they have to wait till the person goes to the ground. That's the idea of the whole thing. So um, I remember one particular case I believe you were involved in um, under Sheriff Martin a year ago where they went for hours. Um, even without being chased, they kept going. And um, that's the kind of situation where when you're not in direct contact with them, they, they can go for a long time and, and keep going. So I think that 24 hour window gives uh, a, a good amount of time to get them a chance to go to the ground. And um, I was sitting looking at my pointer finger. If anybody wants to stop by later, I can show the scar from, it was my birthday, uh, May 26, 2018, where uh, I had a stop stick, I almost take my trigger finger off. The string got caught wrapped around my finger. So yeah, it's, it's very, uh, dangerous if not done right and uh, I was a stop stick instructor and did everything I told people not to do <laughs> so um, yes anything we can do to get them to slow down and uh, go to the ground sooner than later is is uh, a good thing and I appreciate uh, Chair Muller for bringing this up and and uh, Mr. Martin for testifying. Thank you Representative Novotny. Um, Representative Hudson. Thank you Madam Chair. Uh, yeah, I just want to add in response to the civil libertarian concerns. Um, first of all, thank you, Chair Moeller, for bringing this bill. Um, it looks like you've done fantastic work putting it together. And I'd like to thank the other members of the committee for, for your commentary so far. I mean, this is the most kumbaya moment I think we've had in committee um, on this. When it comes to civil, civil liberties, um, that's something that I care about a great deal. And a lot of my past work has reflected that. But I think what needs to be recognized is that uh, it's not just the government that we have to be concerned about in violating civil liberties. It's our neighbors as well, right? And um, as was stated by uh, Representative Becker Finn, when you make the choice to steal a vehicle past that point, you're losing some of your rights to privacy at the very least, right? Um, and there's also what I think this bill recognizes in the addition of uh, the vehicle having been reported stolen as a qualifier to be able to attach one of these devices is the concept of implied consent. If my car's been stolen, of course I want you to go get it, right? Um, I can't think of a circumstance, and I, I think somebody would be hard-pressed to find one, 
where somebody's car would be stolen and they wouldn't want law enforcement to take whatever measure they could within reason to retrieve that vehicle. Um, and so I, I don't see this, especially with how it's so narrowly tailored, um, it being a concern from a civil liberties perspective, and I'm looking forward to voting for this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, very exciting for us to all be pro-civil liberties on this committee. Very important. Um, and any closing comments, uh, Representative Mueller? Thank you, Madam Chair and members. No, I just really appreciate it. And, and, and I would just like to say that um, this is just one of the many things we're talking about when it comes to violence reduction. And we had um, Representative Frazier's bill, House File 25, to talk about violence prevention efforts, the BCA crime teams. I know Representative Feist is going to have um, a bill related to juvenile issues. And I know that members across the aisle are really interested in that, too. Um, and even today here, we'll hear Representative Witte's bill. So I just really appreciate the discussion and the desire to work together to so solve some of these challenges. I'd also just note too, for Mr. Neumeister's comments about chapter 626, it really does need to be looked at as a whole. Um, maybe that's something that the Data Privacy Commission can look on in the interim, might be a good assignment. I don't want to give that assignment to someone who doesn't want it, but um, I do agree with them that that chapter as a whole should be looked at at some point too, but I'm anxious to get this in the governor's hands so we can start utilizing this tool now. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Um, and uh, with that, Representative Bowler renews her motion to that House File 686 be re-referred to the Committee on Judiciary, Finance, and Civil Law. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion prevails. Ooh, I'm going to gavel because I can do that. Great. Um, and members, the next bill on today's agenda is House File 803. Uh, that is also Representative Mueller's bill. Uh, M Representative Mueller, would you like to move your bill? Yes, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. And I believe the motion is to send this to the General Register. Yes, uh, Representative Mueller moves that House File 803 be uh, placed on the General Register. All right. Um, your bill is before us. Uh, there are no amendments. So tell us about your bill. Thank you, members. This will be really short. This is our vehicle bill. <laughs> <laughs> and that's about all I have to say about it. <laughs> Great. I appreciate uh, your support. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Representative Mueller. Um, anyone from the public have strong opinions about this bill? No. Um, <laughs> member discussion. Uh, no opinions by members. Uh, any closing comments? I appreciate your support. Thank you. <laughs> Fabulous. Uh, Representative Mueller renews her motion that House File 803 be recommended to be placed on the General Register. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, those opposed? Uh, motion prevails. I'll gavel for that exciting bill, too. I'm going to start here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Following the tradition, right? Yeah. Long standing tradition. <laughs> Madam Chair, I just wanted to point out that at the Thank you, though. on the agenda, your first bill was actually typed incorrectly. It was typed as 868 instead of 686. Oh, thank you so much for that. Appreciate that correction. I don't know if we have to do anything official with that, but I do, I think it would be online. We can make sure that online. Oh, we did update the agenda online. Thank you. I put it on the, yeah, I copied it. Yeah, we appreciate that. All right, so our final bill up for today is Representative Witte's bill. Um, it's House File 281. Representative Witte, would you like to move that House File 281 be recommended to be placed on the General Register? Yes, please, uh, Madam Chair. Okay, great. Uh, Representative Witte has his bill before us, but we also have the A1 amendment. Would you like to move the A1 amendment, Representative Witte? Uh, yes, please, and uh, I, uh, I can take a moment to explain the amendment. Please do, thank you. Um, and before I get started, um, I know it's a long-standing tradition. If your first bill is heard, you bring um, a treat. And uh, so the treats I provided today, being a former police officer, are, are, is uh, a donut type. Um, they're provided by my local Hy-Vee um, in my district. Um, they are Honey Crisp Brioche Apple Fritters. And um, if you enjoy them, you, they're available at all Minnesota High V stores. So that is my shameless plug right there. Especially one in your 
Thank you. Now we totally, we're all, we're all distracted by this now. So um, I think we're on the A1 amendment. Yes. Go ahead. That might have been part of my strategy. Um, happy belated birthday. It's not a birthday cake, but it is an apple fritter. So thank you, um, uh, thank you uh, um, Madam Chair and members for hearing this bill. Um, after this bill was put on the agenda, uh, Representative Feist suggested adding the age of uh, the offenders to the data local law enforcement agencies uh, report to the BCA in addition to other data in the bill. I think this is a good idea. We've heard many news stories about young juveniles, some in their very early teens, committing carjackings. It'd be good to have actual data on that number. In addition, the bill requires local law enforcement agencies to report carjacking data to the BCA at least quarterly, but I understand that the BCA would prefer annual reporting. So this amendment also changes local law enforcement agency reporting to be by January 15th each year for the previous year's carjackings and attempted carjackings. That's the amendment. I ask for your support. Thank you. Any discussion to the A1 amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the motion prevails and the A1 amendment is adopted. Now to your bill as amended, Representative Whitty. Thank you. Uh, the crime of carjacking, the forceful, often violent, taken of a person's vehicle from the victim has exploded in the past two years. There is uh, no state statute, state statute that is designed for carjacking and, and there's often no requirement for law enforcement to track or report carjackings. In the first year, 2019, Minneapolis reported 104 carjackings. Um, in 2021, it was 655, and in uh, 2022, 522. So obviously we've seen um, an explosion of car jackings. This highlights one city and does not capture the data throughout the state. We are hearing daily of car jackings occurring throughout the metropolitan area and in greater Minnesota. This is a serious and violent crime. Too often, the criminal act is resulting in injury to innocent Minnesotans. During the campaign, I happened to come across a gentleman and uh, his father-in-law on the front stoop of their house. And as I'm talking through the campaign, his wife recently got carjacked that week. And not from the emotional part of it, but also um, having trouble sleeping afterwards um, from that experience. But the worst part about it was um, a couple days later, Bloomington PD found the vehicle. And as they attempted to stop the vehicle, um, the, the person driving the vehicle lawlessness ended up um, in a chase, which we just heard, and uh, they ended up crashing the vehicle. So that family got re-victimized. And that was the worst part about it for them was at what they first went through, but now they got to go out and find a second vehicle, which was very difficult at the time. And that's what they were struggling with also, um, what was happening afterwards. Um, the criminal act of carjacking is not being recorded as its own crime presently. Um, thus making it difficult to accurately measure its toll on Minnesotans. So I'm asking that we create this data and the bill defines carjacking um, in the state as taking a motor vehicle from a person using or threatening use force. The bill requires local law enforcement agencies to report carjacking data to the BCA at least, um, it would be yearly, and the data required to re um, be reported is the number of carjacking attempts, the number of uh, carjackings, the number of persons injured in each offense, number of persons killed in each offense, and weapons used in each offense, and then the data that the amendment of the age. Um, I do have one testifier here from the BCA. Thank you, and I believe your testifier is Dana Gott, so if you can come down and introduce yourself and begin your testimony. Oh, goats, excuse me. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. My name is Dana Goats with the BCA. Um, currently, law enforcement does um, report robberies, and we track carjackings as those robberies where the property stolen is a motor vehicle. So we are currently tracking the date, the intent of this bill, and we have no issues with um, the request to how it's um, compiled and formatted. We have no issues with meeting the requirements of the bill. Thank you. Any other testifiers, Representative Witte? No. All right, are there any members of the public who wish to testify? I'm not seeing any, so member discussion. Representative Feist. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and thank you, Representative Witte, for bringing this bill. Um, I was looking at these numbers, and there is one listed for New Brighton, and that was my friend um, who was on her way to drop her daughter off at my daughter's birthday party. Um, so, so I do think that this is an important issue, and I think data is always the way um, to go about um, assessing what our public safety response should be. Um, and I thank you for adding the age of the offender, um, because I think that's a really important context, so that we really understand what we can do to effectively address this issue. So thank you. No, thank you for your comments. I do have a question for you, Ms. Getz. Um, I know you said you track if it's a robbery right now and consider that carjacking, but you know some of these carjackings might end up in an assault or a homicide or you know something else. And so, um, I, it's my understanding that this bill will help capture some of those other kinds of things too that maybe started out as a carjacking but ended up as something else beyond just the robbery. Madam Chair, yes. Um, so Minnesota went to a more detailed type of crime reporting called NIBRS, the National Incident-Based Crime Reporting System, which is the FBI's standard nationally. And so we do track all of that uh, for if there would be mul multiple offenses involved in the same incident. So we would be able to track all that more detail. Thank you. Uh, Representative Woody, did you have a comment on that as well? Okay. Representative Pinto. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and Representative Woody, I was just trying to figure out um, where, I was just curious, did you know where the information that we do have regarding carjackings then came from? Maybe you, maybe you said this in your opening, I'm sorry if I missed it, but um, sort of is it, um, did the individual agencies just decide to keep this data, or if you understand what I'm asking? Oh, Ms. Getz. Maybe the yeah, Madam Chair, um, Representative Pinto. Um, yes, so as I mentioned, so law enforcement currently report on a, at least a monthly basis. Some agencies report in real time. Um, robberies and then any robberies that where the stole, stolen item is a motor vehicle, that's how we track um, carjackings and how we reported in the 2021 um, annual report. Huh. Representative Pinto. Thank you, Madam Chair, and sorry if I'm being dense and trying to catch up here, but because a, a robbery where a car is stolen is is the definition of carjacking under the bill. So maybe if Ms. Um, Goes could, could explain then, um, I guess we're getting maybe more detailed information. Is that what more we're getting as a result of this? Madam Chair, um, yes, we're, we're actually collecting most of this already, but it's just um, compiling it and formatting it a little bit differently so that you can see the, the data more accurately. Okay, good. Um, Representative Pinto. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, and thanks for bringing this, and thank you, Representative Witte. And yeah, I mean, I agree with Representative Feist. Boy, the more data that we have, um, obviously not individually identifiable, which this isn't, but the more aggregate data we have, uh, the better. So thank you. Representative becker Fenn. Uh, thank you, Chair Muller, and kind of on the same vein, and my understanding is what this does is kind of streamline the coding in the system so that it's, instead of searching for robbery with car, now you can just search carjacking. Am I correct in my assumption about how that would work? Ms. Getz. Um, Madam Chair, yes. So right now the BCA provides an annual report. And so what we did in the, uh, the report for 2021, which came out in July, um, is we put everything together in the annual report so it was clear what the carjacking data was. However, we also, since last, in, in the last year, we have now, um, it's, a, it's a website called the Crime Data Explorer where anybody can go and look up data or crime statistics at any point in time. And so if that, in, those, in that um, website, it's a little more difficult because the we, we, say how people can look up robbery and then look up the motor vehicle as the stolen property, but you, you gotta do a few more clicks. So we're hoping to streamline that. Representative becker Uh Thank you, Chair Muller. And I, I, I thank you for that clarification, because I do think um, 
the more accurate the coding is when the reports come in, the more helpful that is on all kinds of different levels. I know when I was doing domestic violence prosecution, you know, the domestic violence charge wasn't always entered as a code, you know, because robbery or burglary or something else would be higher up in the list. So I think it really emphasizes for us to have the best data we can as policymakers, having the accurate codes that simplify being able to really dial in is really helpful. So thank you for clarifying that. Chair Muller? Yes, Representative Woody. Um, I appreciate both those comments, uh, Representative Pinto um, and uh, Representative Beckfin. What this is really going to do is make it uniform so people know simply what carjacking is. Um, you might have uh, one police department that calls it robbery, another might call it theft. And now it just is classified that way, and I think it makes it very simple and unified across the board, and, and, and it will help the BCA to put it in the category, and then we can start capturing these numbers and then figuring out what our solution is and how do we attack this problem. And, and I also think it's going to help out the prosecutors when they're looking at this um, in law enforcement when they, can, they understand what, what they're actually um, investigating. Any further member discussion? No, any closing comments, Representative Whitty? Um, I just wanna thank uh, uh, Chair Muller for bringing my first bill forward. Um, I know I made a joke about the treats, but uh, um, it was, uh, uh, it was an honor to first have my first bill come through, but I also appreciate all the comments from the members. Uh, I hope you uh, would be in support of this. I think this will help uh, um, keep Minnesotans safe and also capture the information that we're looking for. Thank you. Thank you. Representative Witte renews the motion that House File 281, as amended, be recommended to be placed on the General Register. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion prevails. Thanks again. And um, before we adjourn, I believe uh, Representative Hollins has an announcement. Announcements. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'll, I'll be super quick. We've just gotten notified that um, some of the committee rooms have not been picked up as much, and it's leading our pages to have to do the picking up. And since especially we got these delicious treats and we've all got napkins and Kleenex, I just want to remind everybody to please pick up their stuff. Um, they're not like our servers or... Things. They don't get tips. That's not yeah. their job. Yeah, they don't get tips. They just pick up the paper. So please clean up after yourself. Thank you. Thank you for that reminder. And I think everybody here is aware that we do have an extra committee hearing tomorrow morning at 8:30. Um, it is in Capital 120. So just reminder that that's where we'll be tomorrow. And thanks so much for the discussion, everybody. Today we're adjourned.